and welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. I am your host, Mustin Shah, and joining me is my co-host, Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah, fine, thank you. Masha'Allah. So, inshallah, with Ahkam SOS, we'll be discussing different um, rulings and messiah from taken from the Rasala Amaliyah of Sayyid Salik Shirazi. But before we start any of those, let us discuss Ahkam in general, as in, why do we need Ahkam? I mean, where do Ahkam originate from? What's its purpose? A'udhu billahi as-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad The religion of Islam is a complete way of life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent thousands of prophets and vicegerents of prophets for the purpose of guiding the humanity to the right path. And the final religion was Islam. And Islam as a religion offered all types of guidance, not only in, in faith, and Iman, but also in educational aspects, political aspects, um, social aspects, commercial aspects, and so forth. Islam is a broad religion that covers everything in the life of a human being. And of course, the aim of Islam, of this great religion, is to offer prosperity and felicity and happiness for the mankind in this world and in the hereafter. Okay. In some of the narrations we have that, that this dunya is the plantation for the hereafter. A dunya mazra'atul akhir. So the whole idea of the creation of the mankind in this world was to test the human being, the insan, by sending him the divinely messengers and prophets and books for the purpose of defining who wins and who loses. Imma shakiran wa imma kafura. So Islam came to offer a real humanity for the mankind the true humanity and prosperity. And of course, if the believers themselves, if the Muslims themselves mislead and ignore the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his holy book, Quran, al kareem and by the narrations of his beloved prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his pure family, and his holy progeny, if the Muslims neglect and ignore these instructions, then they would actually lose the happiness in this world, and God forbid, in the next world as well. So the whole purpose of the religion and the divine instructions is to actually save the mankind from the ignorance and deviation to the light of happiness and prosperity. Now, there's a verse in the Holy Quran which states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahu latifun bi'ibadih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind to his slaves, to his servants, to his creation. Surah Ash-Shawra, verse 19. Now, this is what the ulama mentioned, the scholars, that 
the foundation and the basis of kindness comes from this, this verse, that Allah is kind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created this great creation, the mankind, and gave him the reason and intellect and aql, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also send prophets, guiders, and holy books to tell exactly to that mankind how to live in this world, a humane life. Because we are supposed to be living as human beings and not other creatures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the, this great powerful creation of Allah, the power of reason, the power of aql, that we can, um, with this aql, with this intellect, be able to define the correct from the wrong, the right path from the evil path, and so forth. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created heaven, paradise, and God forbid, uh, the hellfire. So that's why the human is, in this world, has the duty of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to listen to the advices and the admonishments of his awliya, his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messengers and prophets and vicegerents of the prophets, and to be able to follow their footsteps and practice um, those instructions for the purpose of um, winning this world. And of course, the most important is the hereafter. Ah, sounds Sheikh, uh, great, great answer. But why do we we need ahkam today as in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given us the Quran, He's given us Rasulullah, He's given us so many hadith and, and He's given us so much in terms of the Ahlul Bayt. We don't need anything more, don't you think? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He created the mankind, the human being, at the end of the day, that person, that individual needs instructions. Okay. So as we, for example, need instructions when we come to a country, we want to live in that country, to live uh, a prosperous life, we need to know the laws and the, the legislations of that country. Without it, we cannot live. Imagine if I buy a car in a, in a specific country and drive fast, high speed, without knowing the, uh, the rules and laws with regard to the speed and traffic system. So likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sends the man to live on this planet, he also sends prophets, vicegerents and instructions in order for that man to know exactly how to live in this world without uh, proper instructions and divinely laws and divinely ahkam and so forth. The man will be, will, would be actually end up uh, in a situation of chaos, deviation, corruption, killing each other, and so forth. So the best thing is to follow the correct rules. And well, where would you get best? It is all divine rule. It's not a man-made rules. So mm -hmm. it's really, we need um, laws and legislations that brings us back to the true path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the correct path of being as a human beings. That's it, So we've discussed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating us and giving us law. We've discussed how important it is for man to actually um, honor uh, the laws and the ahkam rules that have been given. Otherwise, there will be total chaos. There will be no order. And, perf and, and like you said, who better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instruct us and tell us how to live our life in the most beneficial way. But why should an individual refer to you know, a scholar? I mean, is there anything to tell us that we should? Is there any Quranic evidence or hadith that we should refer back to someone who's not part of the Ahlul Bayt, someone who's not uh, a prophet? Basically, there are two forms of evidences that tells us that a person should refer back to the experts in um, the field of 
religion, for example, and of course other fields as well. The first evidence is the rational evidence in which uh, the aql itself can alone be dependent without going back to the hadith or the holy quran and any texture and the second evidence is the texture evidence which represents the quran and the hadith so basically the first one with regard to the aql and rational evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created man he gave him aql as well the intellect and in today's world when we look around us we can see that it is part of the people's um, life that they actually refer back to the experts if somebody gets ill he goes back to the uh, doctors to the hospitals if somebody's cars broke down and they go back to the mechanics and so forth if you want to study you go to the college or university you don't go to the mechanics to study uh, chemistry for example so the aql tells us that you have you have to go back to the experts those who know uh, in that specific subject and field and to be able to um, gain much knowledge from the right body and the right um, individuals who offer you the ilm and, and the knowledge. So that's the first evidence. The second evidence is actually the texture and the Quran and the Hadith evidence. Now initially let's define the fact that the Sirat al Mutashari, as they mention, the way in which our ulama went through in uh, teaching their students and disciples the ahkam, and then those students become fuqaha and jurisprudence. And then they went back to their people and their, their communities and taught them the ahkam. It was the, the way in which the ulama and even the pious believers way of life in the past and the present that they went back to the scholars and asked them and as I've said this is rational because when you need when you have a query a question about a subject you go back to the experts you need to know about the traffic system of this country for example you go back to the experts in the traffic system for example you don't go back to the hospital for example so likewise ulama and their disciples and students um, and the people who followed them in the past centuries did the same thing. They went back and they asked the questions from them and they gave them back the answers, the fatawa and so forth. So it was as they called the Sirat al-Mutashari'ah ah, that the people of Sharia, ah, people who followed the Sharia, ah, who taught the Sharia, ah, um, they actually referred back to the scholars and asked the questions. Now, with regard to the textual evidence, um, in the Holy Quran, we can easily find the following first verse. Allah SWT states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask those who know if you don't know. Surah Al-Nahl, verse 43. So basically, this ayah is telling that person who lacks the knowledge in other words he's ignorant in that specific field to go back and ask the experts especially in the uh, field of Islam and knowledge of religion that's the main thing about the, the verse and of course ask those who know Ahlul Dhikr are mainly Ahlul Bayt alayhim, the progeny of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and pure family and of course, those who come after the, the, the Aimma, the ulama, the scholars who followed the, the footsteps of Ahl al-Bayt and taught the ahadith and their knowledge to their disciples and so forth. So we go back and ask those who know in that specific field. So if it's fiqh, I go back to the faqih, to the jurisprudence, and asking the questions and so forth. So the Quran tells us, go back and ask 
those who know. And of course, the second verse in which speaks about um, referring back to the scholars, the verse tells us, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفُرُوا كَافَةً فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِّنْهُمْ طَائِفَةٌ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ وَلْيُنْذِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْدَرُونَ The verse clearly says that and the believers should not all go out to, 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 to war and to fight. Of every troop, of every group, community, of them, a party only should go forth that they who are left behind may gain sound knowledge in religion. So the, the ayah tells us that a group of you of this nation, of this community, who are able to gain knowledge in Islam, in religion, to go, let's say, to a house or to a seminary and, and study there and gain the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah and Ahlul Bayt and then come back to their um, people and their nation and their communities and then teach them. And then, so they would maybe aware of the Rahkam because people need experts always in all fields. This is by the rule of reason. In all fields, we need experts. So specifically in religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need definitely experts. We need jurisprudence who can teach us, tells us what is haram, what is halal. They teach us exactly what should we do in, for instance, in the wudu, in, in the prayer, in, in fasting, and so forth. So we go back to them. And of course, the verse is also mentioning that a group of you should go and study. And that's what the, some of the ulama say, that it is wajib kifai. It is um, obligatory on some of the people, part of the community, to go and study and to be able to come back and teach the others. That, that actually means uh, wajib kifai. That's some people who carry this uh, duty, then the rest of the people are exempted. Then they have to actually, actually go and um, learn the ahkam and so forth and, and come back and teach the others. So it's mainly if the ulama came forward, studied well, they can actually uh, provide mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the masail and the difficult questions to uh, the community. Now with regard to the hadith source and the evidence, numerous hadith mention about uh, the importance of gaining knowledge and then spreading that knowledge to uh, those who are in need. And of course, to refer back to the ulama as well, and to the scholars. Um, one of the hadith that is mentioned, the Prophet sallallahu he says, طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم ومسلمة Gaining knowledge, seeking knowledge is obligation on every male and female. So. We have to seek knowledge in order to be able to understand our religion, um, the duties, the practices, so we don't fall into practicing haram and forbidden acts. And to avoid from deviation and corruption, of course. There's another narration by Ali ibn al-Musayyab, who narrates and says that I said to Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam that I live far away and unable to reach you to the Imam alayhi salam because people usually lived in Iraq, Iran mm. and the Emma were in Medina in Arabia so they couldn't actually reach the Imam it wasn't like today's technology you know telephone, mobile, mobile phones um, emails and so forth so they had to travel for two or three weeks at least to get to Medina by camel or horse so it was so difficult for them if they have a an issue to actually ask the Imam alayhi salam 
So he goes to the Imam, he says that I live far away and I can't reach you. Is there anyone I can actually trust? And he names one of the scholars in his own town. He says to the Imam alayhi salam, I live far away and unable to reach you every time. Mm -hmm. From whom shall I take my religious parameters? I have issues uh, in uh, Ahkam, for example, in belief, in Aqa'id, and so forth. Who shall I ask? I live, for example, in Isfahan, in Basra, in Baghdad, in um, other cities. I can't reach you, O oh, son of Rasulullah. The Imam replied to Ali ibn al Musayyab. He said to him, From Zakaria ibn Adam al Qummi, ask and refer back to this person, Zakaria ibn Adam al Qummi, that trustworthy on religion and world. Imagine how the Imam Sallallahu Alaihi approved this man, this great scholar of Ahl Bayt salam, that he can refer back by the presence of the Imam salam, being in Medina and not in disappearance like the Imam al al Sharif, still they can go back to a scholar and take the ahkam and other issues from this person. So the Imam says, Salamullah alayh, min Zakaria ibn Adam al Qummi, al Ma'moon ala al Dini wa al Dunya, the trustworthy on Deen and Dunya. Imagine how the Imam Salamullah alayh approves this person that you can go back and ask your questions, ahkam, aqa'id, other segments in, in faith. So Ali ibn Musayyab, he said that I went back and met Zakaria ibn Adam al-Qummi and asked him whatever I needed. So he went back and eventually he asked Zakaria ibn Adam about ahkam, aqaid, and so forth. So imagine the Imams alayhi salam, they actually prepared their followers, the Shia of Ahl bayt to go back to the scholars, of course, the just ones, the pious ones, the ones who are truly um, gained knowledge in, over, in order to give back and pay back those who are in need of the knowledge of Ali Muhammad uh, So the Imam السلام, in this hadith referring back the followers of Ahl Bayt to the scholars. Ascent, ascent, Shaykh. So what do you have to say about those who will come out and say that, okay, the Imams are infallible and we should take ahkam from them. And if the Imam tells us to take it from someone else, like the hadith you stated, at least the Imam is instructing us to go to him. The infallible is instructing us to go to him. Today our Imam is, is in Ghaybah. And why should we follow these fallible human beings who could make mistakes? The Imams of Ahl Bayt, peace be upon them, themselves, they have actually encouraged us and told us to go back to them, to the, to the scholars who will actually come after the disappearance of Imam Al-Mahdi Ajjallah Farajah Al-Sharif, that in his disappearance and a quotation to go back to the pious scholars, to the just scholars. The hadith here mentions um, that فَأَمَّا مَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْفَقَاءِ صَائِنًا لِنَفْسِهِ حَافِظًا لِدِينِهِ مُخَالِفًا لِهَوَاهِ مُطِيعًا لِأَمْرِ مَوْلَاهِ فَعَلَى الْعَوَامِ أَنْ يُقَلِّدُوهُ Whomsoever among the scholars preserves himself against wrongdoing and worldly pleasures, cares for the religion, opposes the dictates of his desires, and obeys the commands of his Lord, then the general public must follow him. It is the order from the Imam alayhi salam that we follow the scholars after the occultation of the Imam alayhi salam to go back to them. And another narration that states the Imam فَأَمَّا الْحَوَادِثِ فَرْجُعُ إِلَىٰ رُوَاتِ حَدِيثِنَا مَضْمُونَ الرِّوَائِيَ That you go back to those who narrate the ahadith, the scholars, the ulama, they narrate to us, they explain to us the ahadith of al-bayt. They actually interpret 
the Quranic verses and the narrations and traditions of the Holy Prophet and his pure family to us. They, they actually extract and deduct the ahkam from these sources and teach us and tells us, tell us exactly what to do in this life. So we, they actually f follow the footsteps of their imams, of, the, of their leaders. They never come up with something against the narrations and the Holy Quran. They are in line with the teachings and instructions of the imams of Ahlul Bayt and their grandfather Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us on Ahkam SOS. And if you have a question to, in regards to Ahkam <coughs> that you want answering, please send them to the contact details provided and we will definitely try and answer your questions. Thank you very much. See you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, oh, oh.